If you find that your gears are skipping, making strange noises or not shifting smoothly, then it is time to make some adjustments. Hello and welcome everyone, Nicholas from Bicycle here and in today's video I'm going to show you how to set your limiting screws, the B-tension screw and how to index the gearing on your rear derailleur. To do all this you'll need a 2 and 4 mm Allen key or depending on the age, a Phillips screwdriver. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and without further ado, let's get into it. Starting with the high and low limiting, these screws are found on the rear derailleur and are typically marked with the letters H and L. If not, then I'll let you know how to identify them in a bit. When in the highest gear, so the smallest cog, the H limiting screw physically prevents the derailleur from moving beyond this point and derailing the chain into your frame. Same goes for when we are in the lowest gear. So the largest cog, the low limiting screw prevents the derailleur from moving beyond the largest cog and throwing the chain into your spokes. Usually you will only need to adjust these screws if you have replaced the cassette or the derailleur hanger has slightly bent. Start out by shifting onto the largest chain ring. Then detach the rear gear cable using the 4mm allen key. This will allow you to shift through the gears by pushing back and forth on the rear derailleur. However, if the low limiting is not yet set, make sure to not push the chain onto the largest cog as you might derail it. To set the high limiting, pedal forward until the chain falls onto the smallest cog. Then you'll need to identify which one is the high limiting screw. If it is not marked with a letter, simply rotate one and see which one causes movement in the jockey wheel. Ideally, you want the jockey wheel to be perfectly in line with the smallest cog. Turning both the high and low limiting screw clockwise will cause the jockey wheel to move towards the center of the cassette. And turning both anti-clockwise will cause the jockey wheel to move towards the outside of the cassette. Here we can see that the derailleur is too far outward and the jockey wheel needs to be perfectly in line with the smallest cog. Determine what you have to do and turn the high limiting screw in the correct direction. Pedal through, see if there's no excessive noise. Push on the derailleur to shift up and back down. If it comes all the way back down to the smallest gear, if it runs smoothly without no excessive noise, then your high limiting screw is set. If I pedal forward and continue to turn the high limiting screw clockwise, you'll notice that it jumps on to the second cog. If it is stuck on the second cog, simply turn the high limiting screw anti-clockwise until it falls onto the lowest cog. Keep rotating until you don't hear any excessive noise or rubbing. And there you go. Now to set the low limiting screw, slowly and carefully push on the rear derailleur while pedaling forward until you get the chain onto the largest cog. Once you're on the longest cog, stop pedaling and stop pushing, but keep holding the pressure. I have already intentionally loosened the lower limiting screw, and as you can see, if I keep pushing on the derailleur, the upper jockey moves beyond the largest cog, and if I were to keep pedaling, the chain would derail into the spokes. Again, we want the upper jockey wheel to be perfectly in line with the largest cog. It's around about there. And in this case, we will have to turn the lower limiting screw clockwise. You can keep pressure on the derailleur and slowly turn the lower limiting screw clockwise until it is in line with the largest cog. So once you have done that, you can apply pressure to the rear derailleur. And if in this position, the upper jockey wheel is in line with the largest cog and you cannot push beyond this point, and the chain is running with no excessive noise on the largest cog, then the lower limiting screw is set. Now that we have set the limiting screws, we can reattach the cable and index the gearing. Indexing adjusts the cable tension to make sure that every one click on the gear lever corresponds to one gear shift. This is done by turning the barrel adjuster, which is located either on the rear derailleur or on the shifters. Ideally, you want the jockey wheel to be perfectly lined with each cog when shifting to ensure smooth and silent gearing across the cassette. Start out by screwing the barrel adjuster clockwise all the way in and then out again by one turn. 
Then simultaneously pull on the gear cable and shift down to ensure that all the cable is released. Then firmly pull on the gear cable to remove any slack and retighten the gear cable bolt using the 4mm Allen key. Here you can also use a torque wrench to tighten to the brand's recommended torque. In this case, 6 to 7 Newton meter. Then slowly pedal forward and shift up once and examine what happens. Here we can already see that the chain is stuck on the first cog and is struggling to move up onto the second one. We will therefore need to increase tension. To increase tension, you'll need to turn the barrel adjuster anti-clockwise and to decrease tension, you'll turn it clockwise. Increasing tension will move the jockey wheel to the left and decreasing tension will move the jockey wheel to the right. In this case, because it is struggling to move up, we need to increase tension and move it anti-clockwise. Move it in small increments, about a quarter turn at a time. And then we can already see it has jumped up onto the second cog, however it is still making excessive noise. So we'll continue to turn it anti-clockwise in small increments until it is running smoothly on the second cog. And there is no excessive noise. Once you are happy with that, you can shift back down to the first gear, see if it shifts down smoothly and then back up. If it shifts back and forth smoothly between the first and second gear, you can then shift up to the third, see if it shifts up smoothly, shift back down. If it is running smoothly between the first three cogs, it should be perfect for the rest. So you can then continue to test the rest of the gears. And if you notice that it's struggling to move either up or down, adjust accordingly. However, that looks good. And now your gears are indexed. Lastly, we will set the B-tension screw. However, if you are happy with the gearing as is, then don't bother too much with the step. The B-tension screw adjusts the distance between the upper jockey wheel and the cogs and also ensures a smooth shifting. The ideal distance between the upper jockey and the largest cog is usually around four to six millimeters. However, here you can check the manufacturer's guideline to confirm. To set it shift into the largest cog in the rear and the smallest cog in the front. To increase the distance, rotate the B-screw clockwise and to decrease it, turn it anti-clockwise. Rotate the B-tension screw in small increments accordingly until you have reached the ideal distance. To check the distance, you can roughly do this by using a four millimeter hex key. If you have made any major changes to the B-screw, make sure to shift through all the gears once again to check if everything is running smoothly. Well, there you have it. Your rear derailleur should now be perfectly adjusted and you are ready to hit the road. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, peace.